Hello Masaka Universe! That Ledger jersey fits quite tight, but they're only one of two winners this round. Yes, we had 10 games, one got abandoned, we have two winners and then seven draws, so kind of a little bit stalemate. Ledger, this window was a pretty big one because that almost relieves them from any relegation trouble. That's probably for them at least definitely a good thing and as I always want to have more teams from the south in. I'm also happy that Lecce will manage this one most likely. But yeah, uh, it for me this round was all, all about uh, can we avoid to have the derby next week not mean anything. Yeah, Milan mucked that one up <laughs> and Inter did likewise and so yes, uh, if Inter win the derby next week they are champions, they get the second star and they win it at the Milan home game against the eternal rivals. It's a big week for Pioli, I mean I, I still think that Pioli should stay in place but having lost now the first leg of the Europa League, if he gets eliminated this week and then loses the derby to Inter. I think the pressure is squarely back on him unduly. So, if you were to ask me, and I hear there's a Lopetegi waiting, not sure if I want to have Lopetegi. I really don't, th I'm really not sure if I want to have Lopetegi. So, yeah, it's gonna be an awful week for a Milan fan like this. And I'm wearing a ring, let you. <laughs> nah, uh, let's take it for, for, for this. But, uh, I honestly I didn't even watch I mean I could not the most entertaining game probably was the Milan game the 3-3 uh, against Sassuolo however we were traveling so uh, couldn't really watch this one I saw highlights and yes Milan could have won realizing that even if Inter would have drawn and Milan would, would have won the win for Inter would have been enough so it doesn't really matter uh, a loss potentially could have done it but I'm not sure whatever whatever I remember telling my wife uh, you know today I'm gonna miss watching Milan and I don't really care maybe this is even one where it's probably better if they lose because Inter will win in the evening and then I have a little bit of a calmer derby. No. Speaking of derby, yeah, the Turin derby, uh, what an absolute snooze fest and then uh, right after it's really I watched two Serie A games, it was Bologna Monza, another snooze fest. Thankfully, I'm second screening and, you know, have other things to think. I mean, the second half of the derby, I, t I, I told the family, you know, the way this game is going, we can have dinner. And we had dinner and I come and I was checking like every 10 to 10 minutes was the score and it was nil nil. Yeah. We also had a big scare on uh, the past weekend between Udine and Roma. Uh, Ndika had like a chest pain. They feared his cardiac arrest. Uh, turns out he's fine. So, good thing there. Yeah, that's uh, probably the biggest headlines out of it. But uh, no, actually not. And I want to start at the Lazio Salernitana game, which Lazio won 4 1 relative, relatively easy with uh, three goals in the first 16 minutes. You know, at least uh, Felipe Anderson, Vecino, and uh, Joanna pulls one back for Salernitana. Then Felipe Anderson again and Isaacson late make it 4 1. That's not a big story because that is a win that everyone would have expected and yes, this keeps Lazio in the running for European spot given that Serie A after this past week most likely will get another Champions League spot so there might be eight teams going in and Lazio currently sitting in uh, seventh so this might be enough. The big story was after the game in, in an in, in, in interview where out of nowhere uh, Luis Alberto basically said I want to terminate my contract, I don't want to have any money more from La Lazio, everything gets owed to me, whatever is. He just signed a new contract so I'm not sure how this, this is going but uh, that pen as a, what a twist after the game. Uh, as I said, I think the biggest win was Lecce's 1-0 over Empoli, a win that uh, now keeps Empoli more or less in the relegation battle uh, there. Uh, I mean, Empoli, 41% chance, according to my model, to get relegated. However, Lecce, and it was a very low late goal by Sanson in the 89th minute, Lecce more or less safe. I mean, they're sitting now... Um, almost mid-table in 13th, 32 points. This means you have a five-point cushion to, uh, towards Frosinone in 18th. Looking actually good, there are so many teams in there 
they had a big, 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 big win for Lecce, that one. Uh, then, as I said, the Derby dead, the Lamoli, the less said, the better. I mean, the, even Juric got sass, as I sent off, was also fitting, and that's probably the least surprising. But other than that, you would try at the beginning, but the, the, the game was just stale, and same thing goes for Bologna against Monza. Uh, again, uh, Bologna, I think, hitting a little bit of brick wall. They were flying at one point at the moment. Nah, it's kind of stale. It's, it's not just flowing anymore. So, yeah, that that was definitely interesting to see. I still think that Bologna will probably um, finish, if not top four. I mean, they have four per cushion to Roma with Roma having a game in hand. Even if that gets tight, uh, also with a game in hand ahead of At Atalanta, eight points. So that's five points. I think Bologna might hold out for a top five finish, uh, which is pretty sensational. Uh, they had a great season. That it towards the end it gets a little a little bit sell is probably a little bit too big. You expect it since they're not a top team. Uh, you know they are now a, to, uh, a, a top team, but, but they're not a, a, a humongous team in it, Italy. I compare them a little bit to Stuttgart in Germany in that sense. Naples two to draw with Frolls and all that. Uh, that was an entertaining affair. I mean the first half was all going Naples way. Politano scoring another. Beautiful goal. Then Meret even saves a penalty from Soleil, whereas Na Napoli misses a few, few more chances. Right after half, Shadira <laughs> uh, gets an equalizer. However, Osman reestablishes the lead. Uh, look a little bit like Osman. I wasn't sure if Osman touched because it was a Quarascalia shot that bounced off, but he got the touch. And then Shadira um, also gets the, uh, the, the, the equalizer again late on. Uh, Rui sent off now, Napoli pushing, but not really happening for them. However, the big story is uh, the equalizer th uh, to the 1 1 for Shadira. I mean, Meret saves a penalty, but this was a playout error of his where that is in, in, in accepting and gives an easy uh, equalizer away. And for that reason, Napoli again dropping points, Napoli also very much mid-table not good uh i told you already whatever i thought about the sassuolo game in the lead up um when i saw the lineup yes he's definitely saving his starters for roma and then what a crazy game that was i mean after 10 10 minutes uh sassuolo had had to lead as a sassuolo team that is actually really in danger of getting relegated at this point but you know at the end of the season all these relegation sites are kind of performing above their great whereas milan is in a relatively safe second spot you will not uh you know also drop points so uh was a lot of heat out it, in Rome, it will count on, on Thursday. Still, you should not be down 2-0 to Sassuolo. Solo. Shukweza had a goal disallowed for offside. Very much so. But then Leal, with a brilliant run, uh, makes it 2-0. That was a really great, great goal. Um, I also have had to win that Lorient take goal that made it 2-0 for Sassuolo. How he walks, literally walks through the Milan defense. Should not happen. Lorente actually makes it 3-1 as well. However, Milan come back a few minutes later. Jovic makes it 3-2. Then another really great Chukwese goal just a few minutes later. Would have made it 3-3. However, by the thinnest of margins. I've seen the picture now a few times. I still cannot really make out how it's offside by against computers. Uh, and it's um, That's chalk. Chalk also a little bit. But Milan keep pushing. And then uh, Okafor gets an equalizer. As I said, even a win would not have read. This was an absolute this game definitely meant a whole lot more to Sassuolo than it ever did to, to Milan. But you know, a 3-3 against Sassuolo being twice two goals down does not look good. Uh, Udine, Roma, it was a 1-1. Uh, I said Pereira and Lukaku scoring. Also in preparation for the big game uh, on Thursday. I think this uh, the European fixtures fig for the Italian teams are definitely conditioning also what's hap happening. Especially since we had two Monday games. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, the big thing is that Ndika had his chest pain, had to be uh, worked on the pitch. We feared the worst. It was not, he, he was in host hospital. It seemed like he was okay. The players then said, you know, oh, it's a circumstance. Let's uh, not continue playing. We finish the game another time or maybe replay. I don't know what the Italian FA will decide. You never know with them. Um, the interesting thing is what should have happened is that his opponent seemingly uh, the entire game has pushed him with his elbow on his uh, sternum here and that caused the pain. At least that's what I hear today and that's really, really odd. But, you know, there you go. 
Inter against Kaka Kaliri. I mean, yes, a win would not have been enough. Uh, so yeah. Still, Inter was in square control. Was really in control of the game. Tiram scoring early. Uh, however, in the second half, Shomu Rolov pulls one back. Yes, a Chalanogo penalty equalizes, but then Viola and uh, gets an equalizer and uh, Kali were pressing. They had a free header, very late, late on, directly onto Soma. That I would have celebrated. Because <laughs> that would have meant something in Cagliari, although I never thought that this would be. Uh, it also has to be that Cagliari is really, really remarkable what they have been uh, achieving. They were more or less down and out, and now they're sitting just below Lecce with 31 points. Also, we're in relative safety because in the Empoli Udine, Ellas uh, ahead of Frozen, uh, ahead of Frozen, so you have quite some cushion. You have three points ahead of Empoli. So, Cagliari might survive this this season. Ranieri pulling out another, I don't want to say miracle, but Cagliari really looked uh, at the midway pound more or less down and out there, finding the mojo. Similar as it did in the Serie B season last year. So, uh, really remarkable stuff there. And getting a point at Inter, that's no small feat. Then, yesterday, uh, Fiorentina 1 1 against Genoa. I think Genoa had the better of the first half from what I can see, although uh, Fiorentina had a Belotti goal disallowed. Icone gets an equalizer after Gudmundsen penalty gave Genoa the lead. Icone gets an e equalizer and Fiorentina pushing. But a very credible Genoa side uh, who has nothing to do with relegation, 39 points, but also very much mid mid table. Uh, earn a draw in Florence for Fiorentina. They have a home game uh, against Pilsen. That's the one that matters to them more. And Atalanta. Uh, hey, this was a weird one. I mean, uh, 13th and 18th, Skamaka again scoring 3 3 3 after his uh, performance at Anfield at Ederson. 2-0, it seemed like cruising for At At Atalanta, who then missed even more chances. However, I have to have Lazovic and Noslin in very short time make, make it 2-2 in this by the hour mark. And then Atalanta is pressing but cannot find five for winner. I hope this does not dash the hopes of Atalanta going into Liverpool on the other side, you know, uh, again. The Liverpool game will mean a whole lot more. The thing is, uh, not only will get Italy most likely a fifth Champions League spot due to the performance in Europe, so uh, because they are they are now in a comfortable lead in the core coefficient, and what especially Atalanta did against Liverpool did wonders for that. Um, should Atalanta win the Europa League and not make it into the top five, which at the moment is happening, Italy could have six teams in the Champions League. Six teams in 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 in, 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 in the Champions League, uh, and then you know you get you lose. I think the the one Europa League spot or Conference League spot there. So, but uh, still remarkable, remarkable, remarkable stuff. Uh, so that was this week. Next week, yes, I mean Euro European ties first. Next week, I think there's only one game, although uh, there's actually a pretty big one at the Olympico as well uh, before that, between Roma and Bologna. Uh, if Roma wanna catch Bologna, that's the one to watch out, out for. So basically everything is on the Monday. Yes, Calgary Juve will be a heated one, as it always is. And yes, there are a few like uh, in the bottom half, like uh, Ellas against Udine. I think that that, that might uh, be a slugfest. But it's all about the Monday games. I mean, Roma, Bologna, and then the Derby dell'Infernale, as I call it, because it might be the. Yeah. I really hope it's not a win for Inter, but it will most likely be. But I think for Milan, these are, this will be tough weeks. I can accept that this past week. They lost to Roma at home, can happen, it was not such a bad performance. They had the draw as a solo, but it didn't matter. The next two games, those count. And I think they will probably decide, probably, although I don't find Frank fair, quite fair, whether Pioli will stay on. In any case, let me know your thoughts on CIC area. I think the relegation race is really in interesting. Champions League, since Italy will get the additional spots, is maybe not as much, but yeah. There, there you go. In any case, I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, 
here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.